Hi, I'm Sloan Artel, Content Manager at CFA Institute, and I'm here with Brian Helmer, who's a Managing Director at the State of Wisconsin Investment Board and the President of CFA Society of Madison. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. You know, so, so you are at a, a pretty interesting seat. Uh, State of Wisconsin Investment Board is the 25th largest public uh, plan in the world. Correct. Of any kind. Um, and you oversee public equities there. Um, and you know, so the, the thing that one wonders offhand, this is active equity. Mm -hmm. What's your edge? Yeah, I think the edge in all things related to investment management, especially active investment management, always comes back to the people that we employ and the talent that we have. Um, you know, it's, it's a bit of a challenge at times. You know, being in Madison can be a, a plus and a minus. Yeah. The lifestyle for people who have lived there for a long time is fantastic. Um, but it is a little bit off the beaten path for most of the financial industry. So um, we wrestle with that, but the stability of the assets is a big plus mm -hmm. relative to um, you know, the dynamic nature of traditional institutional investing where mm -hmm. you have clients kind of coming and going and firms yeah. resizing around their assets under management and the resources that that provides to them. We have a lot more stability mm -hmm. um, with our kind of plan structure. So that's a big plus. I also think, you know, for talented people in the investment industry, our ability to keep them focused on actual investing rather than doing client relationship type work, mm -hmm. traveling related to you know, marketing, we don't do or have a need to do that. Mm -hmm. So for, for people to come to work on the investment side at the State of Wisconsin Investment Board, they're really able to focus on investing and that's a huge plus. Beyond that, I think you know one of the things that um, our CIO David Villa has been a leader in is thinking about risk, thinking about how to aggregate risk, and thinking about how to understand the net overall risk that a plan of that size takes. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges that any large pool of assets that's very diversified takes on as you slice up the assets and as you parse it out into individual um, different managers, whether they be internal, external, active, or passive, mm -hmm. is keeping an eye on how it all comes together to form an overall plan and what kinds of exposures are your active managers across all these different asset classes taking and how does that come together? Are there opportunities, if you could understand that at a high level, mm -hmm. to hedge things that we might want to hedge to, to magnify um, exposures that we see active managers taking to get more you know, alpha out of those same insights? So. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest, I think, innovations over the last you know, three, four years at the State of Wisconsin Investment Board has been the implementation of a lot of new technology designed to help us do just that. So we, we have spent a lot of effort, internal time, money, um, trying to get all of our different slices of the portfolio onto the same risk platform mm -hmm. to give senior management an opportunity to see how those risks come together, to see the overall profile of that hundred and plus billion dollars that we're currently s sitting on top of to give us the kind of insight to develop even more edge. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that I think that technology project enabled was a lot more opportunity to do cross asset class work. We have, you know, I think in the industry we've traditionally had platforms and front office analytics systems that are somewhat asset class specific. And the more you can do to have platforms that see between asset classes and look for maybe whether they be true arbitrage opportunities or just insights that are playing out differently in the fixed income market versus the equity market, mm -hmm. that it can be another source of edge as we come to, um, you know, as we try to bring our expertise to bear on the markets and generate alpha for our pensioners. And sort of capture the benefits of your horizon, right? The, That's right. Uh, That's right. I mean, I, it, I would add that. We have the luxury of doing the thing that, you know, for all of the challenges in producing alpha that exists in the world, we can time arbitrage. We are, we are the true long-term investors, and, and that gives us another opportunity to do things that I think, you know, people playing the, the game, if you will, from an institutional management standpoint, often they see the opportunity, but it's mm -hmm. difficult to have the patience, it's difficult for the clients to have the patience uh, to give them confidence to do that kind of investing, and we we have the ability to do that. that, that, that I mean, well, and you know, you, you've been uh, the state. This board is it's objectively an incredibly successful plan. You're among the best funded plans out there. Um, you know, with any successful plan model, right? There's going to be a discussion about replicating it. Yeah. Uh, not least because you know people want to follow the cool kids, right? Like the, yeah. uh, And so you know, I'm curious. Like, I mean, 
there's got to be an element that's you know idiosyncratic to that um do you think that uh, well i think so first you know i'm relatively new and mm -hmm. there a little under two years i would give great credit to the staff that's been there for many years um, from a caretaking and you know active management standpoint and structuring standpoint, I think the staff has done a great job through the years, and that's part of what has allowed us to stay um, with such great overall um, you know structure and results. But you know, speaking to plan structure and the replicability of it, um, Wisconsin, I think you know this was very celebrated after the the financial crisis. Our ability to stay you know, pretty close to fully funded, if not fully funded through all environments, is really a testament to the risk sharing plan structure that we have, mm -hmm. where um, rather than paying, I mean, in simplistic terms, one of the things that gets pension funds structurally into some challenging situations is that as assets grow through time, plan participants typically receive increases in their payments concurrent with kind of keeping up with inflation. Mm -hmm. And most plans are designed <clears throat> to give their plan participants, their retirees, mm -hmm. incremental cash from the plan to keep up with inflation through time. The trick is, from a structure standpoint, are those permanent cost of living adjustments mm -hmm. or are they um, a temporary function of the overall success and asset levels of the plan? Mm -hmm. At Wisconsin, we call them dividends. We don't call them permanent cost of living adjustments which gives us the opportunity when plan, you know, when absolute returns environment become very, very difficult and mm -hmm. challenging, that we can share that risk with our pensioners. I mean, nobody, of course, likes to see their payments come down a little bit, and we yeah. do smooth it over a period of five years to, mm -hmm. to blunt the impact of negative absolute market environments. Mm -hmm. But the ability to not have to maintain high payment levels when your asset levels are probably temporarily at low, you know, low amounts mm -hmm. helps offset the negative impact of the compounding of taking assets away when you're temporarily down. So that, that is, from a structural standpoint, is theoretically, <coughs> excuse me, theoretically replicable, mm -hmm. politically challenging, right? So that, that, that's one of the key aspects. And then I think the other thing that, again, is not necessarily difficult to replicate in concept, but is politically sometimes challenging, is leaving the plan alone as state budget crises come and go, as the you know different types of economic environments come and go, mm -hmm. Wisconsin has shown great discipline in maintaining their funding, mm -hmm. um, maintaining the discipline, not borrowing against the plan, uh, and that has really helped you know create the kind of success that we've enjoyed. Yeah, it, and so you know this is like a lot of I, I talked to a lot of CFA charter holders, and a lot of them would sort of see your seat as unfair. Uh, and uh, you know, so what, what gets you most excited about you know, kind of capitalizing on these advantages that you, you have in front of you? Well, you know, one of the things we're doing in our area that I am really excited about is you know, to go back to that technology project. Um, another side benefit of that is that it's really broadened our ability to bring uh, quantitative insights and quantitative tools into our fundamental investing spaces. So mm -hmm. uh, I would say the, the, the traditional approach that our equity active managers has had has been you know kind of a traditional fundamental CFA uh, content kind of approach we have mm -hmm. a lot of CFAs on staff and they bring that discipline that you know coming back to cash flows coming back to discount rates and risk assessment and business model assessment mm -hmm. um, the heart of what I think is you know what finance should be but we are now empowered to blend that fundamental expertise with um, the kinds of quantitative insights, uh, the use of kind of alpha factors that have gotten so much attention mm -hmm. in the smart beta space, um, helping our portfolio managers blend their stock selection process with quantitative insights into portfolio structure in a way that goes beyond traditional risk models, I think mm -hmm. is another source of edge that we're trying to employ. I mean, people have applied the term quantum mental approaches, I'm not a big buzzword guy, but, <laughs> but I mean, I think you could call our direction um, in sync with that um, mm -hmm. direction of the industry. So I don't know that it's something that puts us in the lead relative to the industry, but it's mm -hmm. certainly something that we are excited about. It brings us new opportunities. I think it brings an ability to smooth out our alpha production and to just do a better job with overall portfolio construction. So that's one of the things beyond the overall in 
uh, improvement in the tools at the overall fund level in risk aggregation, I think at our divisional level, we're really excited about that opportunity. That's all. That sounds like an awesome confluence of head of tailwinds. Yeah, <laughs> no, we're, we are definitely um, feeling really good about where we're sitting. Um, that doesn't make it easy <laughs> by any stretch, yeah. but but I but I do think that we are optimistic that we have the people, the resources, the plan structure, the stability, the leadership mm -hmm. in place uh, to be successful in the future to, to to match the success that the plan has historically had. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much for for coming here to talk to us. Thank you very um, much for the opportunity.